All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hero Nation Show, the place where business owners and entrepreneurs just like you come to learn tools and tactics to live more epic lives. I am your host, John Reinhardt, and besides me is Dustin Fain. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing phenomenal, and I really hope you don't expect me to talk that fast. Right, so you're in insurance. What kind of insurance do you do? We do everything but health insurance, so home, auto, life, and business insurance. So how long, how, how long has it been? Since I've helped somebody? No. Hopefully today. <laughs> <laughs> um, since you in what in what terminology? How long has it been since you actually started this insurance? Ten years. What's been your biggest struggle in the last forty-eight hours? The biggest struggle in the last forty-eight hours. Not actually in the insurance business. We're uh, launching another nonprofit and helping that get that off the ground. So the biggest challenge has been. Remembering what all has to go into the, the beginning of something. Mm. So budgeting, fundraising, putting people in place for different things, making sure that the delegations are there, the expectations are set, all those fun things. Okay, since you're, you're kind of in the middle of that process, let's dive yeah. into that. Okay. So what is it? What, what, what have been some things that you forgot that you had to do? Because, yeah, you, you've, uh, you know, when you're, re- when you're starting something mm-hmm. else again. That you were just like, oh, yeah, I, I totally forgot that we had to do that because <laughs> that was our design in place now. So elementary, right? You got to get a bank account. That's that's n- n- number one. Um, but really setting, like you said, setting those expectations, setting those roles and responsibilities of, of all the needs that you need to do and all the things that have to be accomplished. I think you do that now, or I think I do that now, but I do it at a higher level and delegate all that off to, right? So now when you start something up, it's just you. Or just you and a small team. And so you go, hey, all these things need to be done, and we need to get all these things taken care of. And then you go, okay, I guess I need to go out and figure out how to do that. So relearning the ground level, if you will, versus the air game. Instead of playing the ground, instead of playing the, the air game, you're playing the ground game again. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, it, make, it makes sense. But like, what, like, specifically, like, were there anything that you were just like, oh, fuck, I forgot I had to do that? Um, so anything specific. So today we, we sat down with a couple of people from McKinney Ice Tea and tried to line out getting, so for example, getting a place to host the camps that we're doing. Or uh, so we, we have to have a location to operate out of. That's not something that I have thought about in a while because I've got a place to work out of now. Right. A place of business. So does that help you kind of like empathize with like some of the kind of small business starting up? Or? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, putting putting the training models in place, right? So another thing that we work through today, we have, you know, when you've been operating for ten years, you kind of have a hey, the tried and true. This has worked. We we onboard people the same way. We do this. We do this. We do this. Right. Because or, everything's on on. Everything's auto. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or at least the the foundation of it is. And then once they get to different levels, then you, it moves off from there. But now we got to go in and build an onboarding process. And what does the vetting look like? And what does the training look like? And and you're kind of shooting from the hip and going, this works here. This didn't work here. And, and being open and being able to go, okay, that, yeah, I'm just going to run this way. And if it doesn't work, we're going to have to adjust on the fly. You have to right. ch- change the oil as the plane's flying. Yeah. If you will. Has there Was there anything that you've done better now that you... Uh uh, as you're going through this process than you did originally when you started? A clear and concise expectations and roles. Mm. So I expect this to be done, or this is what the outlook looks like, and this is what the outcome comes in, and, and making sure that those are, are clear and all the expectations are up front. So how do, you, how, do you, how do you do that? How are you managing that? Uh, managing that by just everybody being up front and having clear communication on the front side. Hey, I'm hearing you say this. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. This is what we need. Awesome. Let's make sure we have everything's down on paper. So one thing when we started our agency, it was kind of a, again, a shoot from the hip type of thing where we just, hey, we, we had this idea, take it and run with it. We had this idea, take it and run with it. And now it's a, hey, let's sit down. Let's talk through the steps that needs to be accomplished to get to the end result. And Everybody has their checkpoints and having check up, right? One thing we've started to do now that we haven't done in the past is we inspect what we expect. So if you expect something to be accomplished, we got to go back and make sure that that's being done. And in the past, I would just delegate that off, expecting for it to be done, check back up in a week or so and go, okay, why is this done? They're like, oh, you were serious about that? Like I needed to do that? Well, yeah, that's what we were talking about. So now having those, the 
pathway of delegation, I think, is, right. is something I've learned and gotten a lot better with. Nice. So um, what would be, if you, is there anything that you, you did worse this time around? I think we did worse this time around. I think there's always things to improve on. No, I don't know. Come on, but, but like from when you think back, like when you first started to this time, you're like, oh yeah, we didn't do that as well as what we, you know. Uh, automated. We automated too much this time around, I think. So we, we jumped in and we tried to go way too hands off, right? So when I started my agency, I had a lot of time that wasn't being pulled in a hundred different directions. And now I went, okay, I know I don't have that much time, so I'm going to try to automate a bunch of things. And so we went way automation instead of being relational. And I think you lose a lot of what your value is. You stop being relational. Right. You, you put everything on. The foundation is bit li- right. based in the relations. Right. You go from A to, to Z instead, or A to M, instead of A to B to C. And build so that what up were some there. of the things that you were just like, oh, crap, like I shouldn't have done that part with the automation? Um, thank you notes to volunteers and uh, reaching out to donors on more of a, uh, rather than a personal phone call, it was a, an email you know, or an auto email. Thank you for your donations or whatever, rather than picking up the phone. So I think you get those repeat people back if mm-hmm. you have the relationships versus the autopilot. So right. So taking the time you could automate everything. Good, yeah. We could automate this. We may not not even be real. We may just be having a conversation here, and it's <laughs> all automated. Oh, oh. You never know. But party in a simulation. <laughs> but when you there wouldn't be a relationship there, right? Right. So. Hmm. I think that's, I think that's good to note. Uh, because I, th- I think a lot of people, when you're starting off, you're just kind of like, do I really have to do all this, all this little stuff? And then uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. 100%. You have to do all the little stuff or you can't get to the big stuff. What's one of the, what's one of the little things uh, that uh, you think is one of the, actually the most important things? Genuine. So just being genuine. Yeah, just people. being genuine. So uh, I think people have a pretty good bullshit meter. They can tell if you. Or genu- you genuinely care or if you're just a number to them. And so really truly taking the time to sit and listen to somebody and and take the time to build a relationship with somebody, whether that be a client, whether that be a team member, whether that be whatever, taking the time to, to listen to them and to build a relationship with them instead of just saying, okay, I'm, I'm, you're, you're here to get the job done and move on. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, it, it does. So what would be your... No, it's it's kind of hard to put numbers on this one, but um, what would be like your top five least important to most important uh, things that you do to create a relationship with someone? I would say being authentic in the beginning, right? That's that's, that's, that's so least to greatest. Yeah, which way we're going here? Least to greatest. Least to greatest, right? So so number five to number one. Right, number one. I don't man. I can't even start to put that in order. I didn't know you asked me all these hard questions. <laughs> Save them all for you. Save them all for me. You've never done this before ever. So, I, I don't know. I guess, I don't guess I can put that into a, necessarily a, a tick. I think you either do it or you don't. Right, but like, okay. but So like time. Some, some people, okay, so time. Right, you, right, you sp- spend time. Mm-hmm. Listen. Um, take an interest in what they like, right? Mm-hmm. Make sure that you can connect. You, you can't really fake if... if if I really enjoy underwater polo and you don't, you're not really going to come and hang out a whole lot, right? So let's make sure we have some of the right, <laughs> the, the same moral fits and values, the same hobbies, the same things that we enjoy together. Okay, so what if you don't? What if you don't? Then, you, in my opinion, that's not going to be a great relationship. So just cut it out. Cut it out. Get rid of it. Use your best yes. Mm. Nice. Right? Yep. And there are times where you can't do that, right? I may not always love to do all the things that my staff loves to do, but I take an interest in what they're doing. Maybe that's the better word than, than have to have the same common. Right? I'll take an interest in what you like to do. Like golf, right? If you're, if anybody that knows me is watching this, they're going to laugh. I hate golf. Golf is terrible. But I play it because I want to relate to the people that I play with. <laughs> and they know that I don't like it because of the way I play. So I get out and hack it. Um, being authentic, I think that's, that's important. Okay. Right. But I think, the, I think the interesting thing is I think sometimes we have to, we have to be reminded Agreed, and especially especially in the beginning, because uh, how do I put it? When your wallet is really empty, mm-hmm. like everybody starts hunting. Uh huh. 
<laughs> and it, 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 you know, it, it's, it's it's interesting because all of a sudden you you, you know it, it's interesting how many people become headhunters when uh when when the when the fridge is empty and mm-hmm. the bills are piling up and now all of a sudden they're 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 out marketing they're out selling they're out working yeah but you know but I think it, at that point a lot of times people forget the the relationship side of it agreed so I guess we know but I guess my point behind that question is it was literally like for the people that are when you hit that point. Um, it's good to have a reminder, something in your head to be able to like, you know what? These are the things that I have to do that like kind of tie you back down to the ground. Get back to the basics. Yeah. 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 Get some kind of a scorecard. Yep. Yep. So, um, you're going, you're going through this stuff. Marketing. How do you, how do you feel about marketing now that you're having to go back and, and kind of rebrand, remake and do that stuff from the very beginning? So I see some value, obviously, because there's lots of companies that spend lots of money on brand recognition and all those sorts of things. But I think f- for the small business owner, it's, I won't say that's a waste of money, but it's not money well spent. So my marketing is, is and what I, I try to encourage small, especially foundational ground level. Go which ahead. Is, which go, is what? Which is small businesses, local businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than branding a, a, a brand, nobody's going to, in my opinion, you're not going to do business at a local level with a brand. You do business with a person. So getting out and having, again, building those relationships. So my marketing and what my recommendations on, on small startups, right? So like this, this nonprofit, let's get out and connect with as many people as possible. Let's go out and knock as many doors as possible of the people that are our demographics and people that we're trying to, right. trying to reach. Let's go tell out and have what a, I'm doing, not yeah. so much tell them what a company yeah. is doing. Right. I'm, I get, we can go out and mail everything and save us tons of time, but the return I think will be a lot less rather than getting my story out there. Right. So how long do you did, think that, did I answer that at all? Yeah, it, 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 it makes sense. Cause you're, you're basically talking, you're talking about word of mouth, but in 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 a type of like uh, sales one on one kind yeah. of fashion. Okay. Um. So, which I think which I think is good. I don't know if I see. I think it depends on what you're trying to do. Okay. So Explain. I, I I I think that if you're trying to build a brand, start with the brand. I okay. think if you're trying to to do something um, that has your name attached to it, um, because it, because at any scale it it stops at some point, right? When I've when I've worked with different people that you know have gotten to the point, say they're in real estate and they start getting to the point where they're doing five hundred to seven hundred you know transactions a year or something like that, and people are like, hey, I only want to work with won't use names. Uh, I only want to use. I only John only, Smith. John Smith. I only want to work with Bob, or I only want to work with John right. Smith. Um, then there, then there is a a disconnect because people are want the one on one service versus um, going into a team. Like, hey, this is a this is a team thing, and then people are trying to rebrand yep. and rework themselves into a team, which sometimes work. But when you try to when you try to be like, hey, we're just a team. You oftentimes try to show off team members and in a climate like today when you have mm, there are I wouldn't say that there's less loyalty, but I, I, I think that you have to pay more attention to actually retention on on your employees um, that it can be very frustrating because people what they try to do is they like you know what I used to advertise myself now I'm advertising my team which means I'm advertising all these different all the people versus the people, brand but when people like move around then people are like well I, I only worked with Susan versus a brand which is like this is the person this is the company I think the the, I, the question I like to ask people if, if they understand a brand is that can you describe the brand as if it was a person right if you can describe the brand as if it was a person, then you have a brand. If you don't, and if you can't, then you you do not. Yeah, there's no brand there. There's no brand there at all. The relationship and the loyalty lies with you or the people on your team. Correct. Versus the brand. So, but I, I, like I, I do think at the beginning, like it, I think it, I think it matters which way you pull it. But I, I like your, I like your approach. I think it, I think it's great. As I think it's, I think that would be great for a nonprofit. Um, 
I think that'd be a, that's a fantastic way of doing it. I think it's great for a small business team, insurance, real estate. Um, well, as long, as long, you know, as long as you didn't want to play too big. Well, I'll agree with you on that. That was a big thing we had to overcome. Was everybody who dealt with me, and then and and all the re- even all the referral partners that we dealt with on the insurance side of it, right? They all dealt with me, so we I struggled with scaling, mm-hmm. right? And that was something that was probably the hardest transition I had to make was bec- from a salesperson to a business owner. I'm a business owner, I can't come out and see you and play golf with you and go have drinks with you yeah. every two days. Now somebody else is going to come in, and an account rep's going to come in and do that. But hey, it's still the same brand. And they went, no, 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 we have the relationship with you. Right. And so as we grew and as we moved differently, we had I had to rethink that and go, okay, how do we? What what other value are we adding other than me? Because right. at some point, I don't want to have to, I don't want to get to, I don't have to. Right? I don't want to. I, w- I want the 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 company to operate on itself. Right? We want to go multi location. We want to go multi. We want to we want to scale. Right. But how do we do that if it's just me? You don't. So that was a that was a that was a hard transition that we had to make. Yeah, I think what people get in trouble with, at least on the front side, is that they think brand marketing, and then people start chunking money. Agreed. Right? They just start. They're like they start thinking about publicity stunts. They start thinking about things that are way, way, way outside the um, the the realm of possibility. Instead of can you just Put your logo up. Yep. Right. Put the logo, logo up. Brand. Logo, logo as many places as you can. Right. You know. Brand these, recognition. These are things that don't cost a whole lot of money to do, um, and yet they they have a big impact down the line. So, um, you know, and you can still work with your people, but it's always in this case like Hero Nation, or it's it's always, um, you know, wh- whatever company it is, and so it allows you to to move smoother. And and uh, and be able to work with more people faster. Allows you to create a machine underneath the engine right. versus a, uh, you know, a, a person. Sport. Yeah, a, a person in there pedaling the yeah the bike pedals. It's like it looks like a car, but it it, does, it doesn't run like a car. No, underneath <laughs> it, there's Fred Flintstone running. Yeah, moving their feet. Yeah. So I I think. I could be wrong, guys. You let me know in the comments below what you what you think. Um, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what. Uh, uh, some of the some of the different marketers out there that I know are watching, uh, what they have to think, they're probably going to tear me a new one and tell me all wh- what's actually going on. Which is good because every company does it differently. It's true. So and there's, there's yeah, there's different well, ways of doing I, everything. Like I said, I I agree with you on the on the scalability side of that, right? From a from a foundational level, if you're just starting from scratch, I think one of the books I read was one of the best things I I've heard was, and I I'd forgotten that I read it when I started, and then when we went to scale and I was hitting all the, these things. And frustrated with them, I went back and read. I can't remember the book it is, but I'll, I'll find it and put it in the comments below. Um, and uh, it talked about starting with the end in mind, right? So what's the end result? Do you want to go, do you want to keep it in one location, one person, one small team? Then that's okay to continue to, to market the same way that we just talked about. Yeah. But if you want to scale and change, you have to think about that on the outset. Yeah. You have to have the end in, in, in mind as you start. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think it's really important. So, yeah. I think there's just there's just there's so much creativity inside of marketing, whether you're doing digital marketing or you're doing traditional marketing, um, or whether you're getting kind of outside the box. You're hiring, you know, uh, a really really awesome marketer. Just don't hire anyone that's just fresh face from college, please. We're so tired of cleaning up their messes. They need some experience. Yeah, they need lots of experience. They come in with new ideas sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. But yeah, sometimes. So pitch that back on you. What would you look for in a marketer? If you were going to be hiring somebody as a marketer, what would you look for? So we had this conversation. Or the least to greatest top five. Least to greatest. Yep. Um, the thing that I would not uh, in any particular order. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing that I would consider the most important um, would be a track record. Experience? Ex- well, no, not just experience. I want a track record. Okay. I want because lots of people can have experience, but it doesn't mean that there's great experience. Understood. I want I want someone that has a track record of success. Show me where you've been. Show me where they were at and what show you me did. The to ROI. Yeah. Show me the ROI. Show me the brand recognitions. Show me where you built this brand from this point to this point. Um, that would be my number one thing. If they haven't had that, and there hasn't been like you know in between you know. The time that I got there and maybe like a year and a half after or a year after I left, 
because you want to see those kind of residual out, uh, you know, uh, effects. You know, what was what was what was happening? Um, or, uh, you know, if that, I think that's I think that would be my number one. Number two would be can they talk specifics and not generalizations? OK, um, it's mine. I, I think that's that's one of my number one, like little wavy flags, kind of like, hey. You don't know what the crap you're talking about. So right. if someone tells me that they're like a Facebook marketer or someone like that and and then they start talking about uh, like really general stuff, right? And if they never dive into something along the lines of actually like paid business ads, um, where they work, how they work, what's, go- what's kind of going on there, if they never have like, um, like, the, like the really specific stuff. Right on on the brand side, um, like down to like the hours, the details, the A and B testing. If they don't, all the analytics should be behind that, the, and how to analytics. read all that. If they're not if they're not telling me anything about that, and they're just telling me about Facebook Live. If they're just telling me about when to post, if they're just telling me about um, how often to post or what content to post, and that's all they're doing, um, I'm gonna call BS. Yeah. Um, so you're probably not. An expert marketer. No, and then that, and that's that's in digital marketing, right? And right. If, you know, if you're you know in in, um, you know if if you're in more traditional marketing, you know, have you done TV ads? Have you done radio? Um, do you have a graphic design team? Do you do you have the people behind you to actually get this stuff done? Because a marketer, or you're speaking in theory. Yeah, yeah, because like a, a marketer is. The, the best marketers out there have a group of people behind them um, that are friends, acquaintances, um, that also have additional records. Right. Right. Whether, you know, because if they're talking about TV, then they have a film company of some type behind them or an advertising agency. Um, they have graphic designers. They have, they have teams to get the they, things done. Because they have, they have, yeah. it because marketing is just kind of the central high point. They're the director of all this stuff that has to happen, right. all these design assets, and and then when I and then when I would say when you're looking at any project, um, I want to see a multiple dissemination of assets across platforms. What I mean by that, if uh, yeah, uh, yeah, what I what I mean is like if you let's say you took made a video, I don't care, like a some ad. Um, for something, you know, and you, you ran it, ran it on TV. And, and if someone says, yeah, we're just going to run this on TV and, and then we'll take the same ad, the exact same thing that we're going to throw it on Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that. I have a problem. Sure. Now what I want to see is I want to see that during this filming process where you had all this different stuff that you took the time to this create video assets off that side set that took like 10 seconds, five seconds, right, to create all this different content, this wealth of media that can then be created for each individual platform, which creates a brand across, you know, um, everything from the Facebook ads to... Take bits and pieces out of all that video stuff and make it into different things. Right, because, I mean, like, let's you know, let's, let's say that you were... Boys and girls, if you're looking for a marketing job, he's giving you the... The, the keys to the kingdom here. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know about that. But like, <laughs> um, like, but let's say you're doing like something like natural, like shampoo, and you were doing like a commercial on on that kind of stuff. And well, then I'd want to see that you had like, you know, and you were shooting around like like uh, one of the sets was a waterfall. Well, I'd want to make sure we have lots of little shots of waterfalls and water and stuff like that, so that we could put like, um, like take thirty seconds of that and then put like words over the, on the side that could be, you know, on on Amazon or on something else. It's like. Look at this, you know. Be able to use the same organic beauty products made for you in your home. Have you done some uh, some radio announcing as well? I have no, I've no. never been on radio. Um, but I want to see some of that kind of stuff so that it so there so at the end that at the end of the day this, from a like, business owner perspective that's if yeah. I'm paying to do the videos, let's use it multiple times in different things. Right, but you'd be surprised at how often. I mean, I have I've done thousands of videos. And I do mean that when I say thousands, that's not a hyperbole of any way, shape or form. It's literally thousands, thousands and thousands um, of videos. And the majority of the time, um, and I, I've been frustrated with this for years. Um, I will see business owners, uh, real estate's really bad about it. 
if you have a house and you're and you and you've got a, a shot of a house, um, you know that you sent someone out there with a drone and a, um, you know they went went through the house, they did a whole house tour. I would expect that you would take that footage, and every three months I would expect a highlight reel. Yep. Of all the houses that you did, I would expect a highlight reel at the end of twelve months. Um, with like, here's like all the amazing houses that we sold this year. Kind of the letter of success. Hey, um, take a look at, at what we've already done. I would expect that. I would expect, um, I, would, I would expect like sh- single shots of houses that would be used as ads. Um, that would be going up everywhere. That would be used just for your brand, not just for selling the house. Um, I would expect for the top ten. I would do videos on the top ten houses that we sold this year. The top so why don't you think beautiful. a lot of real estate teams do that? They're lazy. Do you think it's laziness? I think I think it's laziness, and I think because well, here, it, it, laziness takes a lot of different forms. Sure. Um, in this case, I think it I think it normally takes a form of I'm too busy trying to do all this other stuff to yep. mess with that. Yep. Which I think if you're too busy trying too busy to create a brand and marketing for yourself, then you're too lazy to actually take the next steps to actually build a brand that actually lasts longer than than your lifetime. Agreed. So if you're not like if you're not going to do the work over here to actually get it working, then you don't belong or deserve to have to move to the next step. Right. To move to the next level because it because it gets more complicated from here. Right. And if someone says, "Well, I just don't have the time," well, you shouldn't have the time because you should be giving that to someone else because you already know. I think that's what a lot of business, especially small business owners, miss, yeah. right? They, they want to do everything themselves. And they don't know how to delegate that off or go out and find and hire somebody that has that, right? So all the stuff you're well, talking to me about. Get, a lot of people get fooled, too. That, sure. That's the other problem, right? A lot of people get fooled because of really good fakes. Agreed. Right? Yeah. There are really good fake video guys out there. There are really good fake um, uh, marketers. And maybe they're not even fake. Maybe they're just good. But they're not great, right? Right? They're just they're okay for your at this at this level, um, you know. Um, they're just they're okay for for this level, but they're not okay when you need to get to this level, or they don't have the capabilities or the people behind them to get to this, right? They might be great for shooting your um, your KXAN whatever. Uh, you know, television commercial that you know. You know they're not going to have a bucks. full motion picture, right? But when you're like, okay, I actually need to brand myself, or I need to create stuff for my website, and I need to like actually create like a full marketing system. They're kind of like, what do I do now? Or are they are they just put out the same stuff that they did last time? Yep. So expecting different results. Right. Yep. So that that's that, that's my that's my rant. I'm sorry, guys. I, no, I that's that's what yeah, as you should. That's that's kind of why we're here, right? Talk about different things. <laughs> um, I, I like the way you put laziness comes in different forms, right? It's maybe not necessarily. I, I don't think there's really any business owners. You can disagree with me, and I probably do as well. But for sake of conversation, I don't think most people are lazy as they don't want to get out of bed in the morning or they don't want to go work. I think they're lazy as they don't want to take the time to hire somebody else or take the time to research different aspects of the ways they could grow their business or take the time to go back in and rebrand. I think it comes down to learning new information. Yep. I think a lot of us, um, you know, when we first started off on whatever, where we were doing, right. It like the, we were kind of like an information overload. Agreed. It was like a huge overwhelm of information. You're just like, Holy crap. It's just like getting piled on you. Just like, Oh my God, there's so much here. And, uh, and then you're like, you know what? Um, you got this and you started learning some more and then you, you kind of got into the process of mastery. And then when you start realizing you have to go into another subject, right? Let's take marketing or, or digital marketing or, or, or sales funnels or any of this type of stuff, which, um, which is quite extensive. And even the learning curve is really, really steep. Really steep, yeah. Um, people get overwhelmed. They get frustrated. They don't understand why they're doing this again. And then they automate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they automate the systems um, and try to get there. Try to get there faster. Yep. Through like, oh, you know what? I can just skip this step. And the my I have my my favorite saying uh, that I have is, "You cannot leverage what you do not understand." I love that. So, 
I love that. If you don't understand it, then you you don't you don't know the difference in between a good a good uh, one or a bad you, one. You don't people don't understand the difference in between a cinematographer and a videographer. There's a huge gap there. Yeah. People are, I love when people call me a videographer. I'm just like I've almost like almost given up at this point. I'm just like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, I'm tired of I'm tired of explaining this to you. Cinematographer that different different level of stuff here. Yep. Um, they don't they don't understand. They don't get it. I'm okay. I'll keep moving. But when people don't understand the difference in between, you know, what these different jobs, they have no way of un, of being able to assess value. Agreed. They have no way. It's it's like the first time that you. It's like being a three year old. And walking up into uh, uh, in, 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 into a uh, into a used car lot and looking over all these different cars, and you can't tell the difference in between the Lamborghini and you know the 1997 Honda Civic. You know, yeah, Honda Civic. You have because no, there's no value. You, you no don't value. understand it. So it requires that time. It requires the understanding. It requires the. Like understanding, like, hey, the Honda Civic will get you from A to Z for a long, long time. Congratulations on gas mileage and all the wonderful things that come with owning a Honda Civic. Congratulations on what it means to own a Lamborghini, too. You know, it's a whole different set of value. It's a whole different set of value. It's a whole different set of cost. Right. Guess what? Your insurance is going up, right? Right. Hey, <laughs> he's that's not covering it for. Uh, he's not covering your Lamborghini for one hundred and ten dollars a month. Ain't happening. I mean, we, yeah, no, whole different set of values, whole different set of assets that we're insuring. So there's all these different things, and so if you don't understand, like, oh, there's well, why do why does your insurance have to go up? Why does my mechanic bill cost so much more? Yeah, why wh- why different I mean, engine, different car. yeah, all the different still things. Car still runs on gas. Why do I have to pay more for gas? Well, you had mentioned real estate, so you can take that same thing in real estate, right? Why am I paying this guy one percent and this guy three percent? Well, if you're a real estate agent, you don't have that value to present, or you don't understand that value to present, then there's no reason to. Exactly. So yeah. it's a it's a whole different thing. So and I'll be I'll be honest, I don't know the difference between a videographer and a cinematographer. <laughs> All right, for everyone who's out there, videographers. Um, I, tra- I asked the question for you guys because I don't think you guys know either. So the tra- 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 traditionally, a videographer um, is normally the job that you give to the guy with a video camcorder of some type. Um, they normally shoot things like um, court cases, okay. or they shoot stuff for the lawyers and like dissertation. You know, um, that's uh, boring. I don't talk about that. Or they might show up to do a, um, you know, uh, like like video your kid's birthday party, or something like that. That's normally a videographer. videographer. Um, that is they shoot that, the video, they give it to you. That's it. Well, they might, they might they might do some editing, but it's. It doesn't. It looks like video. Yep. Okay. Um, some of the higher end videographers might um, might uh, you know have some better cameras. They might do some little commercial kind of thing for the local TV station. That's a videographer. Um, a cameraman or a cinematographer are which are also two different classifications. A a cameraman means I run cameras. I do exactly what a director. Or a producer tells me they're normally doing stuff for television. They're a, a camera operator. Um, they don't. They're not necessarily involved in the creative, um, but they're really good at getting the job done. They're really they're fantastic, well trained um, as far as the camera operations are concerned. Then a cinematographer is someone who... He was just giving himself kudos there. He said he was very well trained and was fantastic at what he does. I, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a camera operator. No, I'm not a cameraman. Okay. <laughs> so we're not there yet. He's the next level up. So a cinematographer is someone who shapes light. They are the guys who... Sounds interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more about how does light work? How do you create a really amazing picture? They're normally over the top of the cameraman. They're like, I need this shot. I need this shot. They're the guys who create the amazing images that you see on movies and television, um, Game of Thrones. You, 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 you'll you see the word cinematographer, and you know like this guy really understands um, his his stuff as far as video light shots all of those right. and normally a cinematographer a real cinematographer has a gaffer right behind him okay he works with a gaffer a gaffer is the guy who um, who actually kind of executes and 
works with lights and electricity. He kind of executes whatever the cinematographer's designs are. Got it. Um, so cinematographer has a hell of a lot to do with what the end product looks like um, all the way through editing and um, actually color grading and, and stuff like that because in a, in a, in a true – when you pick up a video camera, let's right. say like your phone – the video the image, camera. The image that you take is the image that you get. Right. Versus, um, I'll show you what this camera looks like right now. This camera is actually shooting in log. And uh, hi, everybody. We're now in log. And hi, everybody. It's now graded. And uh, congratulations. It looks a hell of a lot better graded than it did in log. Sure. Um, but that requires I, the cinematographer. Of course. Then turns yeah. to the, there's yeah. a, it, there, it's, it's the different sets of mastery in, inside the systems, right? Um, so when I work on, on set, normally I'm a, uh, either a cinematographer or I'm a director. I'm one of the two. Um, because you have the knowledge, you've continued to learn from it, and you have tremendous more amount of value to add to the, your client or the people that you're talking to. Right. So it's, it, But you can see like that's yeah. very different than being way like, different. I need a video guy. <laughs> yeah, way different. And my elementary knowledge of digital marketing when we're talking about videos or talking about at sets and stuff like that, I wouldn't know the difference in those. Yeah. So if I go out and hire somebody, I would hire somebody based on my limited knowledge, right? right. So what you're telling, what you're saying, and what I would agree with is you have to understand those differences mm -hmm. before you go out and look at them, or you become lazy and go, "Hey, I got burned once. I'm not going to do that again." Oh, it doesn't work. Yeah. Video doesn't work. Yep. Marketing doesn't work. It's all a waste of money. Not There's really. lots of companies putting a lot of money into different kinds of videos. It's it's all about it's all about knowing your audience. It's about knowing who you are. It's about knowing what your brand is. It's about knowing uh, what your end goal is. Um, it, there's just there's just a lot to it. Yeah. And there's a lot of depth there. So you mean when you, when you dive the story you put out there to somebody from forty to fifty that's that's an empty nester is different from a twenty to thirty year old. You mean the video is different? Yeah. You have to do different things. Yes. So I I would agree with that a lot. Well, I mean if you if you're doing a presentation. Yeah. On insurance. Do you say the same thing to me that you do uh, to the 40 or 50 year old? Nope. 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 Not at all. If I walked in, right, cowboy hat and all, and then and then the, the guy right behind me who's like a complete metrosexual walks in, would you give us the same presentation? Nope. Then why would you do it on video and marketing? I think a lot of I think a lot of people do that though. I think a lot of companies do that. I think a lot of especially smaller companies, they give the same blast out there to everybody. Well, I think that's because they put too. Put, they everyone thinks of marketing, or they think of videos, or they think of all this kind of stuff as as one shot stops, right? They create one massively huge video or one huge whatever, and then if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. And they don't think of it as this is a consistent amount of money that needs to be put out on a consistent basis, on a yearly budget, on a weekly budget, on a monthly budget, um, on a day-to-day -day budget kind of thing. Um, because when you put it on to a daily level, you know, um, much more of a micro instead of a macro level. Is that right? Micro versus macro. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then, then all of a sudden it, everything starts, I think, making a lot more sense. You, you, there's a lot more variety when you're putting out consistent marketing than when you're putting out one huge giant piece and you're just, I mean, letting it would, run. Who would do that? Like, right. if, if we were talking about anything else in sales, do th do do something one time and then never do it again? Would you go to one large client? Right? Would you Would you go find like the biggest client that you could? Would you spend all your money getting to them? No. And then for them to tell you no? Nope. No, you have to consistently fill the pipeline. And so in video marketing, you got to consistently fill the pipeline. you got to consistently fill, it, fill the content. Right. Same with Instagram, Facebook, Stories, um, LinkedIn. I don't care what you're talking about. You're consistently creating content, consistently showing up, and can people will consistently show up. Sales, consistent sales follow consistent content. Agreed. We're consistent activity. Yes. Because it's uh, consistent activity that is shown. What do you mean by shown? So I think if so here's here, well, a lot of people do this, right? Where they go out and they do fantastic work, right? I did this for years. I'm I'm guilty of this. Um, 
you know, I was doing video stuff. I was, I was out there creating videos and making stuff, but I never made my, I was making marketing material for everybody else, but myself. And for years I did that. And it finally, it caught up with me, caught up with me pretty hard. Right. Where all of a sudden was like, oh crap, I can't grow any farther yep. because I've hit my limit. Right. I wanted to start heading out to the next level where I was I'm like, I'm, I need to start moving national and international. And I all of a sudden had, had like just slammed my face into a door. Yep. Because I was constricted by. You didn't show any, you didn't show anything you did. I didn't show anything. I so nobody knew you. To, right. I was like, you know, everybody who, everybody who I did work for knows me and they're, you know, a couple of their friends know, you know. Kind of doing this you didn't put anything out there to brand yourself and to show yourself and be consistent over time. Right, and it, and it killed me. Um, you know, so I think that I think it's really important. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen with real estate agents or insurance or it happens in all industries. Like, or, or, it's know, every like, industry. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's it's it just happens. And you need so it doesn't matter if you do really amazing work. You have to do really good amazing work, and you have to show it to other people. You have to tell people about it. Yeah, you have to. Which is all marketing, I think, summed up is, right? You have to do amazing work. You have to tell people about it. You got to get the word out there. So how are you going to do that? Yeah. It's different, all different kinds of ways. You can choose to do it through video marketing and social media, and Instagram, Facebook, all of those other things that you mentioned that I'm probably not even a part of because I don't really know about it. But um, <laughs> yeah, you got to get out there. You got to get out there different ways. Yeah. So what ways have are you going about marketing um, your your uh, your? Uh, I knew that question was coming. Yeah. So yeah. What, what are you what are yeah. you doing? What are you going to do differently? So we're going to do more videos. <laughs> we're going to do more videos. We've done uh, very small amounts of videos. We've got some on our website. We've got some that we ran some Facebook stuff on. Um, we are consistently now putting content out on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Um, we got some stuff out there on YouTube, but we're not utilizing that consistently like we should. Uh, we've, we've, we've done more of the referral face-to-face -face relationship building. But again, that's not necessarily scalable. So those are some different things that we're doing. Um, now we're looking at some different avenues to be able to do those things with. Nice. So if anyone wants to find out about your nonprofit, where would they go? We go to uh, ab aboveallthings.org. Above all things. Above all things. Um, all right, guys. Thanks again. Uh, well, let's hear your comments down below. Uh, let us know what you think. And until next time, be your own hero.